Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Q Music Academy. I hope you're doing well. Today I've got a new video for you and we're going to be learning a Spanish arpeggio, which I like to call the PIMA, named after the fingers which we're going to be using. I'm going to explain this in a little bit later part of the video. But the PIMA, Spanish arpeggio, is very beautiful sounding, especially when it gets to a nice speed. I'm going to give you guys a demo in just a second. So stick around and let's learn this together. So first of all, guys, let's get a demo of what we're going to be learning today. Now, I've chosen my own specific set of chords. I'll teach you later how you can use this with other set of chord patterns as well. But I'm going to be doing it with my chords, which goes from B minor to F major, F sharp major. Sorry. Ready? This is the demo. <laughs> So let's get down to business. So if you've watched a couple of these videos, you would know that we always start with the right hand part, which is also what we're doing today. So let's take this very simply. So once again, I'm going to have a diagram of this on the side here, but thumb is P, index is I, middle is M, and your ring finger is your A. So that's the names of the fingers, which is hence why we call it the P-I-M-A, because it goes in that order. It goes thumb, so let's start on the bottom string here, thumb, index on third string, middle on second string, ring finger, or A as we call it, on first string here. So we've got thumb, index, middle, ring, P, I, M, A. Now that's the first part of it, so you've got, so now if I say it with the strings, six, three, two, one. Now once you've got that down, I want you to Next time, instead of starting your thumb on this sixth string here, start it on the fifth string. So five, three, two, one. Still the same pattern, still going thumb, index, middle ring, but you're just moving the one where you play the thumb on. And then after you've done that, so you've got six, three, two, one, five, three, two, one. Now if you haven't guessed it already, the next one will be four, three, two, one. And then you would go back up to five, three, two, one. And that's one set, like one bar, one piece of your arpeggio done with like one of the chords. So all that's essentially changing, these three fingers are actually just staying the same. So they're just going three, two, one, three, two, one. And all that's changing is this is the thumb is going six, five, four, five, six, five, four. Five, and when you put those together, five, four, five, and then you start again. Now practice that at that speed, even slower if you can't do it at that speed. But once you manage to speed this up a little bit more, you start to see, you don't really want a galloping sound, you want the, this, these three. You don't want it to be, or like, you want it to be even. Even when you speed it up. So eventually you get it to that speed. But first, start slowly. And so on. Keep doing that over and over. Speed it up and you'll have a nice standing arpeggio on your right hand ready to go. All right, so on to our left hand part now. So we've got our chords. Very, very simple. This one is extremely simple. You start here, seventh fret, B minor. So no middle finger here, B minor. Now keep in mind, all of these are actually bar chords. So if that's something you struggle with, I would suggest that you check out my other video, which I'll link here which teaches you how to strengthen your bar chords and actually get nice sounding. So you don't want to get, you know, that's exactly what you don't want. You want to get a clear, clear bar chord. Next chord, you move it up once and another time, you get an A major. Keep in mind that I also did put down my middle finger here to make it a major chord. We'll have the diagrams here as well so they help you out. Then again, move it up once and another time, you get a G major. It's 
still with the finger down because it's a major. And keep the finger down, just move it up once this time, you get an F sharp major. Now the tricky thing here, oh, it's not quite tricky, but it's actually a variation that I like to use. So for the F sharp major chord, you can use just the normal F sharp major, or you can turn it into F sharp major seven chord by taking away the pinky. Or sometimes even I like to do this other variation. This is, I believe, an F sharp add flat nine chord. I've taught this in another one of my videos. So these are all variations of the F sharp major. You see, I only play it with the normal F sharp major chord because I think that's the one that sounds nicest, but you can actually experiment to see which variation you like more. And there's lots of other variations of even the other chords. You can turn them into seventh chords by just taking away the pinky here. We could do other things to them, but just if you're a beginner, just stick to the basics and you'll find out that, that sounds quite nice actually. Alrighty, time to put everything together now. So we've got our right hand pattern. We learned that in the first part of the video. Chords we just did in the last section of the video. And now finally, all we have to do is put them together. Now I'm not gonna take you guys at full speed just yet. We're gonna start at a slower speed probably. Around that idea. So we're gonna do that together actually so you can get a chance to practice with me while we play so you know where you go wrong, where you can do better and just overall get a practice before you put it up to real speed. And it's always a good idea to practice slowly first because that way you make a good foundation. Ready? So we're gonna go, I'm gonna give you four counts. I'll go one and two and three and four. So that was our first run through of that. That actually wasn't the actual run through because with the actual run through, you got two of each chord. I just did one of them there. So you get a chance to practice it slowly, but it doesn't get dragged out too long. Now we're gonna do it actually a little bit more at real speed. Now keep in mind that just then we did. And then we changed chords. But for the actual version, we're gonna do two times of that set. So. So the arpeggio taranto that I taught in another video, which goes, you can use that one, link in the link above here that you can check out the video. But I would just suggest if you're a beginner, just, or just simple strum like that. Don't make it too hard on yourself at first. All right, one last time. I'm gonna do it at actual full speed now. So when you feel confident, go over the very slow one first, then make it a little bit faster with the one we just did. And now take it at full speed with me now. Ready? One, two, three, four. So now that we've actually learned everything, I was thinking of giving you guys some extra tips, which will make help you make this sound very nicer than it would be usually if it was played just monotone. There's a few little things that I would watch out for. The first one is, if we're starting here, this is our melody, the bass. That's a melody. Because the rest of the part is just going. Now, don't get me wrong, that actually sounds beautiful on its own as well, but when you play these together, if you try to accent the part on the thumb, see that 
that sounds a lot better than if I was to play this and actually not accent the thumb and it would kind of sound just monotone and there would be no contrast to it. So that's what we're trying to get. And also following on from that point, you want to, when you start, so start here on your B chord again, try even within those accents, the downbeat, which is the first beat of the bar. So here it's the first note that we're playing on each chord. These bass notes, like the first one you're playing with your thumb on the sixth string, make those extra accented because you want the downbeat to feel like, you know, it's settling. You want to go... And tip number three would actually to be when you're practicing, practice your transition in between the chords because it's easy getting that one chord and actually getting that pattern on it. It's quite easy, but the transitions in between the chords is what's really difficult. And especially if you're going to do this over and over again, when you get to here, and then you need to go back here. So that's one of the points that I would really, really practice with this. Now, aside from those guys, if there's anything else that you would like to know about this arpeggio or any of the other videos that I've done, feel free to give a comment or even just message me on my Instagram at Q Music Academy. It was nice teaching you guys this lesson. I hope you find this useful and actually are able to play this within some of your songs or when you're playing with someone else. If you like this video, give me a like and a subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you.